In the name of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather to give God thanks and praise for Christ's victory over death and to commend our brother, Bishop Dominic Mylong to God. All of you here present are witness to the ministry and to the life that Bishop Dominic offered to God over all these years, and especially to our local church. We know that death is not the end, nor does it break the bonds that forged in life, because we proclaim Jesus Christ, who was put to death for our sins and raised to life to justify us. Join now together as the family of God as one body here in Orange and with the universal church. We listen now to Father Kim Tron as he reads the words of condolences sent to us by our Holy Father, Pope Francis, which just arrived the other day. The Holy Father was saddened to learn of the death of the Most Reverend Dominic Mai Thanh Luong, and he sends heartfelt condolences, condolences to you, the late Bishop family, and the clergy, religious, and lay people of the diocese. With gratitude for Bishop Leung's dedicated ministry and his particular solicitude 
for the Vietnamese community throughout the United States. His Holiness joins you in commending his soul to the merciful love of God our Father. To all who mourn Bishop Leung's passing, Pope Francis cordially imparts his apostolic blessing as a place of peace and consolation in our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Signed by Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secretary of State. Được tin Đức Thánh Cha, được tin Đức Cha Đa Minh lương qua đời, Đức Thánh Cha vô cùng thương tiếc và chân thành gửi lời phân ưu đến quý ông bà và anh chị em tăng quyến của Đức Cha Đa Minh, các giám mục, linh mục, tu sĩ nam nữ và toàn thể giáo hữu trong giáo Phật, trong niềm tri ân tinh thần phục vụ tận tụy của Đức Cha Đa Minh, đặc biệt là Ngài đã ưu ái quan tâm đến cộng đồng Việt Nam trên khắp nước Mỹ. Đức Thánh Cha xin được cùng quý ông bà và anh chị em có dân linh hồn Đức Cha Đa Minh cho Thiên Chúa Cha của chúng ta đầy lòng thương xót và nhân ái và cho tất cả những ai đang thương khóc sự ra đi của Đức Cha Đa Minh Đức Giáo Hoàng Phan Cô ưu ái ban đất lành tòa thánh như bảo chứng của bình an và ơn an trong Chúa Giêsu Kitô Chúa chúng ta ký tên Đức Hồng Y Pietro Parolin quốc vụ khanh của tòa thánh Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose your servant, Bishop Dominic Long, from among your priests, and endowed him with the pontifical dignity and the apostolic priesthood, grant, we pray, that he may also be admitted to their company forever, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By Chichat Pinji Pizalia, vào ngày ấy, trên núi này, Chúa các đạo binh sẽ dọn cho tất cả các dân một bữa tiệc đầy thịt heo, đầy thịt béo. Trên núi này, Ngài sẽ cất chiếc thân bao trùm muôn dân và bức màn phủ trên mọi nước. Ngài sẽ tiêu diệt sự chết đến muôn đời. Chúa là Thiên Chúa sẽ lau sạch nước mắt trên mọi khuôn mặt và loại bỏ nỗi tuổi hổ của dân Ngài khỏi toàn mặt đất. Vì Chúa đã phán như vậy. Vào ngày ấy, người ta sẽ nói, Đây Thiên Chúa chúng ta, chúng ta đã mong đợi Ngài để Ngài cứu độ chúng ta. Ngài là Chúa, đấng chúng ta trong đời. Chúng ta hãy hân hoan và vui mừng, 
trong ơn cứu độ của ngài đó là lời chúa Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Filipenses Hermanos y hermanas, nosotros somos ciudadanos del cielo, de donde esperamos que venga nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Él transformará nuestro cuerpo miserable en un cuerpo glorioso, semejante al suyo, 
en virtud del poder que tiene para someter a su dominio todas las cosas. Palabra de Dios. said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Bishop Dan, Archbishop Gomez, dear bishops visiting to us today, brother priests, sisters, and especially the family of Bishop Dominic and all friends who are gathered here today. Today we come together to pray for Bishop Dominic Mai Luong. We come with profound respect for this humble and loving bishop, priest, uncle, spiritual father, friend, and brother in the Lord, who has given his whole life to God. Today is a day of thanksgiving to God for the life and ministry God gave to us through Bishop Dominic, and for the faithful and generous life he lived among us. The words of Bishop Dominic's Episcopal motto, you are strangers or aliens no longer, describe well both the mission and the impact of Bishop Dominic's life and ministry as he spent his lifetime as a bridge builder 
between the church in Vietnam and the church in the United States, between the Vietnamese culture and the American culture, between two peoples who knew very little about each other at first, but who were destined to become neighbors and friends, even brothers and sisters in the household of faith. Bishop Dominic's own life bridged both churches, one the church of his birth and childhood in Vietnam, the other the church of his adult life in the United States. He brought the two together in a ministry that he, he could never have foreseen. But today, as we look back at Bishop Dominic's full lifetime, it seems perfectly clear that God was preparing him all along for a unique ministry in the Catholic Church of this country as the first Vietnamese bishop in the United States. I had the privilege to live in the same rectory with Bishop Dominic for six years when he lived at Our Lady Queen of Angels shortly after coming to the Diocese of Orange. He was a great support to me personally during the building of our church, and I grew very fond of him. He was always kind and considerate, always interested in parish life, always willing to help, always humble and caring for people. He was generous to a fault. He had the gift of a calmness and serenity about him that people noticed and appreciated. Even in the midst of a noisy celebration, he seemed to be centered and relaxed. Sometimes I know he was homesick for his former parish, Mary Queen of Vietnam, that he founded in New Orleans and served as pastor for 20 years. And I know he was always homesick for the food New Orleans is famous for. He was visiting in New Orleans the weekend Hurricane Katrina arrived and was on the last plane to leave New Orleans airport before the hurricane closed the airport down. He was very generous with the church in Vietnam, which he loved so much. In his home village of Ninh Cung, he recently was able, after many years of work, to establish a pilgrimage center where his own family's home had once been and where, many years earlier, a bishop had been ordained in the barn on the property, who later became a martyr and a canonized saint. In his very last months with us, Bishop Dominic was able to see the beginning of the shrine to Our Lady of Levon at Christ Cathedral, a project he worked on with a group of Vietnamese businessmen with whom he met regularly. Bishop Dominic was always popular in our rectory because he loved the early masses. He loved to celebrate 6.30 mass during the week and seven o'clock mass on Sunday. He made many good friends in the parish. He'd come back, even after he left us, he'd come back for birthday parties and other celebrations. On Wednesdays after the 6.30 mass, he would join a group from, from the mass and they would go out for coffee and breakfast and solved all the church's problems. <laughs> Bishop Dominic gave the group the name Vatican III. <laughs> he was always looking ahead. They loved him dearly and met with him as recently as the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. To those who got to know him, he became a friend and a fellow pilgrim. He was always a source of encouragement and support for new initiatives, always raising funds for new projects. Bishop Dominic was always a priest and this past spring celebrated 51 years of ordination and 14 years as a bishop. As the first Vietnamese bishop to serve the church in the United States, he belonged not only to us here in the Diocese of Orange, but to Vietnamese Catholics all across the country. On Mondays, he would appear in the rectory kitchen in the morning after having been to Texas or Kansas or New York over the weekend 
to visit different Vietnamese Catholic communities or to help dedicate a new church. He was a tireless sign of encouragement to newcomers adjusting to a new country and finding their place in the church. Beginning with his work for the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops as Director of Pastoral Care for Migrants and Refugees, and then continuing in New Orleans, and finally here in Orange, he helped to resettle thousands of people from Vietnam into new lives here in the United States. When Bishop McFarland called his appointment as a bishop a happening of major historical significance, because Bishop Dominic's appointment as bishop was a dramatic recognition of the tremendous positive impact Vietnamese Catholics have had on the church in the United States in a relatively short period of time. At the time of his appointment as bishop in 2003, there were 400,000 Vietnamese Catholics in the United States and some 600 priests and 500 religious. And I know we've had quite a few ordinations since then. Bishop Brown, our retired diocesan bishop, deserves credit for recognizing the impact of Vietnamese Catholics on the church in Orange and seeing the benefit of a Vietnamese auxiliary bishop and then asking the Holy Father for just such an appointment. And Bishop Van will be affirming the importance of Bishop Dominic's work and the tremendous contribution of the Vietnamese community making to the church in Orange next week when Bishop-elect Thomas Tai will be ordained the second Vietnamese American bishop to serve in the Diocese of Orange. It seems very clear that Bishop Dominic was the right person at the right time and in the right place. God was preparing him for his mission. He certainly lived out his motto that he took from the letter to the Ephesians. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus as capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. There are no strangers and aliens in the household of God. We are called to truly welcome the stranger among us and to become fellow citizens with the Holy Ones, built into, into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And that is exactly the vision Bishop Dominic spent his life working for a household of God where there are no strangers and aliens, but only fellow citizens built into a dwelling place of God and the Spirit. As our bishop's document, Strangers No Longer, together on the journey of hope, declares, in effect, the church is increasingly called to be, as Lumen Gentium declares, a sign and instrument of a very closely knit union with God and of the unity of the whole human race. In the church, no one is a stranger, and the church is not foreign to anyone, anywhere. While we may know, while we may or may not be able to change human hearts or the laws or the politics as much or as quickly as we would like to embrace the stranger, the immigrant or the vulnerable, at least in the household of God, there ought to be no strangers, no aliens, no one disposable or unworthy of human respect and dignity. For we have a different perspective, the intrinsic dignity and eternal destiny of every human being. The prophet Habakkuk tells us the vision still has its time presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. My favorite story about Bishop Dominic is one that he told me himself. And as many of you know, Bishop Dominic left Vietnam at the age of 16 to continue his studies for the priesthood in the United States. 
He had returned in 1969, shortly after his ordination, but, he was, but it was now 1975, and the conditions in Saigon were worsening. Bishop Dominic, then of course Father Dominic, flew to Saigon from the US to visit his family in Vietnam to see how they were doing and to see if he could do anything to help them. But his plane was turned away and not allowed to land because the evacuation from Saigon was underway. The plane was diverted to the island of Guam where refugees from Vietnam were being taken. At this time, Bishop Dominic had no idea what was happening to his family back in Saigon. Of course, he was worried. He had begun to hear reports that the city was being overrun and what would become of his family. Once he landed at Guam, where Father Dominic then was invited to celebrate Mass by a bishop who was celebrating Mass that day for the refugees on the island. At some point during the Mass, the clouds moved and the sunlight fell on a section of the congregation. One face in the crowd drew Bishop Dominic's attention, and he instantly knew who it was. He recognized his mother in the crowd. He quickly excused himself to the presiding bishop. He said, I think I see my mother, I have to go. And he rushed into the crowd to embrace his mother. The mass stopped while mother and son embraced. That unexpected reunion with his mother, I'm sure, was one of the most joyful moments in his life. St. Paul tells us our citizenship is in heaven, in the household of God. We recognize each other's faces, not as those of strangers and aliens, but as the faces of mother and father, sister and brother, built together into a dwelling place of God. Jesus tells us in the gospel today, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. Isaiah says on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and it will be said, behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. After welcoming so many people to this land, may Bishop Dominic be welcomed by the saints and angels of God and arrive safely in that place the Savior has prepared for him, where there will be no strangers and no aliens, but only the family of God's sons and daughters in the household of God. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in that peace. God, the Almighty Father, raised his son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save people living and dead. For Bishop Dominic Wong, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother, Bishop Dominic, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Xin cho Đức Cha Domenico đã thi hành nhiệm vụ tư tế trong hội thánh, được dự phần trong phục vụ Thiên Chúa. Chúng ta cầu xin Chúa. Xin Chúa Xin cho tất cả những ai đã yên nghỉ trong niềm hy vọng sống lại được nhìn xem tôn nhan Chúa. Chúng ta cầu xin Chúa. Xin cho tất cả chúng ta đang quy tụ nơi đây Thờ phượng trong đức tin Sau này được đoàn tụ trong nước Chúa Chúng ta cầu xin Chúa Xin Chúa đến tại chúng con Almighty God, giver of peace and healer of souls Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and The voice of your people Whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your people on this day when we bring our brother Dominic to rest, so that through them, according to your, our confident hope, we may experience the help of your loving kindness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Let me pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Brother Bishop Timothy, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children spread throughout the world. Remember your servant and priest, Bishop Dominic, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is also united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of our own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe every tear away from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us on to temptation, but deliver us from evil. us, Lord, we pray every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty merciful God, that it is you made your servant, Bishop Dominic Lung, an ambassador for Christ on earth, so you may raise him purified by this sacrifice to be seated with Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Monsignor Tuan Pham has some words of remembrance. of this very unassuming man. It would not be uncommon to hear someone say, oh, I didn't know there was a Vietnamese bishop. But to those of us who knew him, this quiet and gentle soul impacted our lives in a way that made us think that somehow we had come into the presence of the Lord. What comes to mind is the Christ's own invitation in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Come to me, for I am meek and humble of heart. People were drawn to Bishop Dominic precisely because of his unassuming nature. And they came to love him. Though of Vietnamese birth, he was born, he was not previously known by those he came to serve in Southern California. But quickly after arriving, became a great supporter of the growing Vietnamese community in the Diocese of Orange. His Episcopal motto taken from St. Paul to the Ephesian, you are strangers and aliens no longer. Itself was a testimony to Bishop Dominic's own conviction that the Vietnamese Catholic community, having wondered, wandered, and suffered for so many years in the desert of persecution, was welcomed in the Church of the United States. That community, offering the riches of its own spiritual heritage to the American Church, in particular to the Diocese of Orange, was integrated according to the model established by Bishop Todd Brown and came to be accepted valued and loved in such a way that it now felt secure in its new home and in the household of God. The English-speaking and Spanish-speaking communities also eventually came to be touched by the kindness of Bishop Dominic's outreach to all. And for them, this translated into their perception of the Christ-like holiness of the soul of this unassuming priest. He always had a moment to stop and chat and offer a word of encouragement to anyone and everyone. And today, as we bid farewell to God's humble servant, we offer a loving word back to him. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the master. Pray to God for us, Bishop Dominic, from your lofty place in heaven. Anh chị em thân mến, Đức Cha Lương, một cái tên rất quen thuộc đối với người Việt Nam của chúng ta, người Việt Nam công giáo tại hải ngoại, bởi vì Ngài là một vị giám mục tiên khởi, Việt Nam tiên khởi tại hải ngoại. Ngay từ lúc đầu khi được chọn, có một số người thắc mắc không hiểu tại sao biết bao nhiêu người công giáo mà tại sao chọn một người lương. 
để làm giám mục. Vâng, chúng ta cũng biết tên thật của Ngài là Mai Văn Cừ. Và cái chữ C đó cũng biểu tượng chữ Công giáo, chữ Catholic. Đức cha Nguyễn, Đức cha Mai Thanh Lương thân yêu của chúng ta, của giáo phận Orange ngày hôm nay, ngày hôm nay đã ra đi trở về với Chúa sau một cuộc hành trình khá dài với tuổi thật là trên 80. Ngày đi không không để lại một di chúc bằng văn tự, nhưng cả cuộc sống của ngài chính là một di chúc quý giá. Nhiều người chúng ta đây đã có dịp tiếp xúc với ngài và tất cả đều nhận thấy rằng ngài rất giản dị, rất bình dân. Bình dân hơn khi Ngài nói tiếng Anh rồi pha chút một chút bùi chu vào thì thật là khôi hài, không ạ? Nhưng sự giản dị và sự bình dân của Ngài và có nhiều người cũng cho rằng Ngài quên mình là một vị giám mục và Ngài thường ăn mặc rất là giản dị mặc cái quần kaki cũ, một chiếc áo sơ mi phu, một chiếc áo lạnh mà lỗi thời có những lúc Ngài Nhìn có vẻ hơi luộm thuộm, không có cổ trắng, quên luôn cả mũi giám mục và chỉ có đeo cây thánh giá cho vào túi. Cách cư xử khiêm nhường, hòa nhã, tế nhị. Không bao giờ Ngài xưng mình là cha. Ngài thường xưng là mình, một cái ngôn từ rất là bắc kỳ nhưng rất là gần gũi và quen thuộc với mọi người. Đức Cha Lương rất thương người và nhất là những người kém may mắn, vô gia cư. Khi còn là giám mục ở trung tâm công giáo, ngày thường mua thức ăn buổi sáng ở McDonald giúp cho những người homeless, những người vô gia cư. Và Ngài cũng không bao giờ từ chối tham gia phân phát quần áo, tặng quà cho những người nghèo tại các khu vực ở Civic Center và ngay cả trên Los Angeles. Một cuộc sống đầy bác ái, một cuộc sống đầy yêu thương đã phát xuất từ đời sống thiêng liêng và đạo đức của Đức Cha. Ngài đặc biệt tôn sùng Thánh Thể và Ngài cũng muốn tất cả mọi người chúng ta yêu mến Thánh Thể nên Ngài đã bỏ công để soạn một bộ sách Chầu Thánh Thể. Và ngày nay, hiện nay nhiều giáo dân trong các cộng đoàn ở nơi đây còn đang sử dụng và theo gương của thánh quan thầy đa minh ngài rất yêu mến đức mẹ mỗi lần vào phòng cấp cứu ngài luôn mang theo một cỗ chẳng hạn trên người bài hát sau cùng mà đức cha hát trước khi từ giã cõi đời chính là bài hát mẹ ơi con yêu mẹ yêu từ thời thua bé yêu mãi đến tuổi già yêu tha thiết bao la và ngài đã chút hơi thở cuối cùng với cái câu cuối cùng của bài hát chết trong tình yêu mẹ thầy sáu bình con tinh thần của đức cha luôn sát bên cạnh của ngài đời sống của ngài là giám mục tại đây có kể lại một kỷ niệm khó quên khi ngài về thăm quê hương tại Ninh Cường và Ngài cùng với quý cha Bùi Chu chuẩn bị dâng thánh lễ tại một nghĩa trang gần đó. Ngày hôm đó mây kéo đen cả bầu trời. Một cơn mưa như đang chuẩn bị đổ xuống. Thì Đức cha thay vì hủy bỏ thánh lễ hoặc là di chuyển thánh lễ nơi khác, Ngài vẫn cương quyết. Cương quyết cử hành thánh lễ và ngày cầu nguyện cùng đức mẹ và các thánh tử đạo và tiếp tục dâng lễ lạ lùng thay trong suốt thánh lễ không có một giọt mưa nào và ngay trong lúc thánh lễ kết thúc thì mưa đổ xuống như thác lũ sự ra đi của đức cha mai thanh lương là một phần thưởng mà chú dành cho những người đầy tớ trung tín trong 51 năm làm linh mục và 14 năm làm giám mục. 
Di chúc của Đức Cha không gì khác hơn Là chính đời sống gương mẫu của Ngài Di chúc đó được ghi khắc Trong khẩu hiệu giám mục của Ngài Chúng ta không còn là những kẻ xa lạ Nhưng chúng ta là anh em Trong cùng một gia đình dưới mái nhà cha Và vì thế chúng ta con cái của Ngài Những người công giáo Việt Nam nhất là tại hải ngoại Chúng ta hãy đón nhận di chúc của Ngài Hãy sống giản dị, sống khiêm tốn Và cư xử, đối xử, tử tế đối với nhau Bishop Dominic, we thank God for sending us to us, sending you to us, the Diocese of Orange. Và xin Ngài Đức Cha ở trên thiên đàng xin tiếp tục cầu bầu của Chúa cho chúng con. Và chúng con tiếp tục ở cùng với Đức Cha thông công trong lời cầu nguyện, gần với Đức Cha hơn bao giờ hết qua lời cầu nguyện của mọi người. Chúng con cậy vì danh Chúa nhân từ cho linh hồn đã minh được lên chôn nghỉ ngơi Welcome, priests, and bishops, especially our bishops from Vietnam, our religious and all visitors and bishops' families, to give thanks to God for his life and ministry and continue with him in his journey through. We are here today to give thanks to God for the gifts of Bishop Dominic. Throughout his ministry as a humble shepherd, Bishop Dominic had taught, guided, and companioned with us. Let us continue to keep him on our prayers, knowing that he is also praying for us, that we one day will meet again in paradise with God, Mother Mary, and all the saints. Kintua, Uyongba Enchiyam, from Chuakito. Om nai chung ta dang loi kang ta tien chua. Vi nhung ji duk cha luong. Dalam cho chung ta. Duk duk cha luong. Da zai bao. Ung dan va dong an. Vui chung ta. Vui kong viet muk vu. Qua nyai lo mat vi chuok chan. Chung ta. Tip tuk kan win. Again, on behalf of, of uh, Bishop Dominic's family, um, uh, Bishop Van, and the whole Diocese of Orange, we appreciate your presence at today's funeral mass for our, as, uh, as you said so very eloquently, for our beloved Bishop Dominic. Uh, and we have um, the opportunity to thank God for his, his ministry here. Uh, following today's funeral mass, uh, there will be a reception uh, in our parish hall, which is right across the breezeway. Um, but before that, if you are, um, uh, you're also invited to the committal, which will be at Holy Sepulchre Cemetery. There will not be a formal procession, but you're invited uh, to join um, uh, us there for uh, the rite of committal. And then you are invited back here afterwards again for a reception. So you can go to the committal and then come back here for reception. But if you're not going to go again to the, the committal, you're invited to the reception immediately 
following today's uh, funeral mass. And again, we want to thank you on behalf of the entire Diocese of Orange and Bishop Dominic's family for your presence today at this funeral mass. God bless you all. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Dominic in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which have bestowed upon Dominic Luong in his life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother, Bishop Dominic, to his place of rest. Mm -hmm. 